Stephen, I, I mean no offense to you, and I mean no offense to First Take, because I think this show is extremely valuable. It is an honor to be on this desk every day. It really is. But what we've just witnessed is the problem with this show, where we create narratives that do not exist in reality. The implication, what you are implying, that the white voters that vote on NBA are racist, that are, they, they favor white people. You I just said that. that. You ju that. Yes, you did. On first take, fireworks flew with J.J. Reddick, Stephen A. Smith, and Kendrick Perkins. I yes, did you did. Not, I did. Yes, not, you did. That I is did exactly not, what you implied, not, Kendrick I Perkins. Not, that is I exactly not, what you implied. I, I Secondly, not, hold on, did, hold on. I did not call. I stated the facts. I stated the facts. And you're not about to sit up We all know like what you implied the other day. We all know what you implied just now. Hold on. I stated it. It's the facts. One at a time. It's the facts. One at a time. It's the facts. Okay. In turn, Perkins erupted at Reddick for what JJ felt was valid criticism of Kendrick's previous comments. Basically, here's what happened. Perkins accused Denver Nuggets center Nikola Jokic of stat padding. Thus, Reddick went on first take and was asked about Perkins' so-called stat padding argument. And the, the best argument I can make of why this is such a ludicrous statement, they're 23-0 and when he has a triple-double. Going back to last year, they've won 28 games in a row when he has a triple double. You want a slap box? At least allow me to be on TV to be able to throw my jabs and, you know, my uppercuts. Perkins didn't appreciate the comments and demanded they air it out on TV together. When I, when I look at JJ and I hear him talk because he's so big in analytics and he's, he's a historian when it comes down to diving in deep and going back into history and talking about the evolution of the game, why didn't he never bring up this in particular subject? When it comes down to guys winning MVP since 1990, it's only three guys that won the MVP that wasn't top 10 in scoring. Do you know who those three guys were? Who were they? Steve Nash, Jokic, and uh, Dirk Nowinski. No. Dirk Nowinski. <laughs> what, do, what do those guys have in common? I'll let you sit. I'll let it sit there and marinate. You think about it. Perkins was accusing the NBA and NBA media of racial bias in MVP voting. Thus, it set the scene for what we saw to open up this piece. One thing we've learned from that is we can actually track which players create good shots for their teammates. And Nikola Jokic is top five in shot quality created. So if you watch them play, Perk. During the segment, Reddick goes through how the numbers show Jokic is top five in shot quality created. In response, Perk pretends to be bored, closes his eyes, and pretends to fall asleep as well. This idea that Dirk and Steve Nash were uh, favored to win the MVP because they're white. Um... First of all, you stopped short at 1990. That was your cutoff point for players to win MVP not in the top 10 in points per game, which is a stupid stat to judge MVP on. This isn't middle school. 1990, Magic won it. In 89, Magic won it. 87, Magic won it. 87, he was 10th. Mm -hmm. 89, he was 15th. 90, he was 18th. Okay. Okay. We we okay. judge MVP year to year. It was just it was, I didn't, it was just a strange thing. It was just a strange. Well, why did you cut thing? it off at 1990 that's though? Because that, that was that was convenient. That's, that was no, I'm convenient. Just asking, I'm just saying. That hold was on, convenient hold on, time though. Hold on, time out. Hold on, hold on, time out, time out. It was just a strange thing that it just happened. It was just a strange thing in 2006 when Kobe averaged 31. When he was playing with Kwame Brown and Smush Parker, and what it was, was the just record a strange that year? Forty-two and see, forty. They were forty-two so, and forty. So, so let us speak. So he's so the so most they valuable made player. The playoffs. They made they made the playoffs with that roster. You take Kobe off that team, they probably win eight games. Okay, so let's let's make that very very clear. When it comes to MVP voting, eighty percent of the MV, of the voters are are white American. Twenty percent are others. I know that stat. If you want to talk about advanced stat, I do know that one. Which led to this quote, as displayed on your screen, where J.J. Reddick went over Kendrick Perkins' implications, which, of course, the former 
does not agree with. How about Reddick pulling back the curtain on First Take while on air for First Take, condemning the show for pushing false narratives? We all understand the performative and theatrical aspect of First Take and other daily debate shows, but a panelist calling it out in real time is rather brazen. Perkins, however, maintained that he wasn't pushing a hot take, stating, This is how a lot of former African-American players have been feeling for decades now. Above the original video, fellow sports media member Chris Williamson would write, Racial bias definitely exists in the NBA and other leagues when it comes to how players are covered. Can't just dismiss that. Directed, of course, at J.J. Redick. The always insightful Bamani Jones would weigh in before Nash won his MVP. As I recall, the biggest voice to question whether race played a role in his candidacy was Bill Simmons. My old buddy, Dan, as in Levitard, made the same point and caught hell from colleagues. He goes on, I mentioned that to say how white dudes receive white ball players can be a weird thing to untangle. Nobody patronizes white hoopers more than white dudes, but when they're excellent, well, that's a little different. It can sometimes go too far. When things get dissonant, and it sounds like white people are going a little far to hype up a white dude. Well, yeah, some people are going to wonder what's going on. It wouldn't be an unfair question to ask.